Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, I'm gonna be Soma versus Ample on Coliseum. Top right, it is our blue Terran player. It is Ample. He finished in third place for Star League, uh, Caster Muse's Star League Season 3 back in 2020. And in the bottom left, we have Soma, finished second in ASL 11. He is a Green Zerg player today, and I'm very excited to see what he will do here against Ample. All right, so they're talking in Korean. If anybody can translate in the comments, I would appreciate it. And Colosseum, a very, very old map. We have Artosis versus Day9 on this map. We also have Artosis versus In Control on this map. We have Idra versus an unknown Protoss on this map. And a very, very weird game uh, from the Gosu Gamers uh, replay pack on here as well. So, good memories on this map. Colosseum. You're probably wondering why there is creep here. Hmm. Hmm. It's just so that Terran and Protoss cannot wall off super easily. And so that Zerg can defend their choke by throwing down a sunken colony if they want. Man, they are really going at it on the keyboard, aren't they? Anyway, what's going on? Oh, it's a ZVT. Here for your Monday. Hit that like button if you're excited for a ZVT. Uh, if you didn't see the epic weird fun game that I cast and posted the channel last Thursday, I highly recommend you watch it. Even if you're not a fan of ZVP, it is super non-standard. Uh, there are scouts in there. There are devourers in there. I, 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 have, I have no idea. I have no idea how that came uh, managed to come around, but it's crazy. Woo, like that SCV spinning around. So yeah, check that out. Weird fun, best versus hero. It's so fun to cast. People have had nothing but good things to say about it. And again, even if you don't like ZVP, I promise you'll really, really enjoy this game because it's insane. All right, all right, good. Good, got that taken care of. What are we doing over here? Is that a hatch first to Rooney? That's a hatch first to Rooney. It's a 12 hatch in it. Yada, yada, yada. Stractor pool. Everything's fine. Looks like a Mulelisk opening. Out of our Zerg player today, Soma. Soma, I, I haven't cast a ton of Soma from what I've seen of him and what I've cast of him. He just, he can do things with Muta Ling that other Zerg players can't. It's very strange. It's extremely... Man, it's extremely crazy how he's able to get stuff done. No Lurkers, no Scourge, right? Nothing, no Hydras, nothing uh, that you usually see against Terrans at all. It's just Ling, Muta, all the live long day. He gets tons of value out of pure Ling and Mutalisk, spamming them, controlling them with utmost efficiency. That said, we've seen Ample take down, who was that, Queen? In one of the better ZVTs I've ever cast from, oh, time has no meaning. That was probably two months ago here as Ample expands to this high ground. So, I mean, pff, Ample's an insanely, insanely good Terran player. I'm really excited to see what he does here today against Soma as well. Hey, look, a lair timing. Huh. Shock and awe. And yeah, definitely the SCV did manage to come in and see... Uh, the timing on that lair is not confused about it at all. Yeah, see, it's coming back to make sure the lair didn't get cancelled for some insane reason. Would really like to stick around and see if there's a spire coming up and might have enough HP. Oh, the drone! The drone with that extra little bit of range! SCVs, okay, saw the spire timing, that's it. I mean, technically, you don't need to see the spire timing if you see what the lair timing is. Ample is that good at this game. But checking to see just makes you feel good, regardless. Vulture Speed, the first upgrade of the day off of this factory. Huh. Alright. Interesting stuff. Are we just going right into mech? That's an armory. This has got to be a second fac. And it is. Alright, so Ample's decided to go directly mech. No bio opening whatsoever. Terran fans will be happy to see this. Every time a Terran loses a game where they go, wait, your axe, they just... All the comments are like, why didn't the Terran use mech? Blah, 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 blah. I just, I don't know. I don't know, man. You can definitely win games with eight racks and science vessels and stuff. But yeah, it always does feel like if Terran opens mech, they just kind of crush with it. Terran wins with mech over Zerg feel 
stronger. They feel more dominant, you know? Hey, look! We threw up a sunken on this creep up here for that exact purpose that we were talking about at the start of the game. Ah, uh, that's so nice. Look at Soma using the, the map features that we talked about. What a nice guy. See, the lings are basically walling off here because... Oh, my... Wow, can hit up... Whoa! What the range? Did you see that? It was hitting over here. What? This sunken is extra magical powerful. What is going on? I mean, that's, like, not even in view of the overlord. All right, whatever. So, two bases are super easy. Going for a lot of vultures here. Oh, and Goli oh it's a Goliath build. It is a Goliath build. Goliath is a good unit. The Goliath has more damage output than Marines do with his twin auto cannon thing that they're doing. So really, really good against things like Hydras. Not the best thing against Mutas, but do outrange them pretty heavily. Karen Boosters is on the way, by the way, at six minutes. So yes, this is great. We've seen this build before. We've seen it win. We, we've we seen it lose. It's not an insta-win against these Mutas. Uh, the attacks on the Goliaths do half damage against the Mutas just based on unit type here. But with the range especially, they get so many free shots on the Mutas before the Mutas can even hit, hit them at all. That It's kind of neat. It's kind of neat to see Goliaths in the situation. Karen Boosters needs to finish now, but it is a few seconds away. So the Mutas have some time. That's what the turrets are for. Oh, Karen Boosters! Finishing and the Mutas are like, wait, what? That was that was Karen Booster Goliaths. What is happening? Nope, he knows what's happening. You see that at six minutes, you know it's a Goliath build. So honestly, Zerglings are amazing here. Yeah, upgrades for Zerglings are amazing here too. Getting plus one or plus two attack on those Lings and getting a surround on those Goliaths can be super, super good. And maybe kind of keeping the Terran at home while you work on those upgrades can be pretty nice as well. But you'll notice the Mutas are like, they're not even over there. They're just kind of hanging around playing base defense. Trying to defend this third base as it comes up. Man, Vulture's so speedy. So fast. So we're doing Hydras. I like it. Hydras, no lurker aspect. Oh, working on Hydra attack range. Siege mode coming in. You do want some of those siege tanks with the siege mode. If your enemy is going for those Hydras. So I really like what Ample's doing right now. It is good. It is strong. Goliath Siege Tank. Hmm. Can be very difficult for a Zerg player to deal with, especially before they get Dark Swarm, especially before they get Plague. That's exactly what we're seeing here right now. So, it looks like Soma wants to take the action to Ample here, which is cool. I'm down with it. Queen's Nest coming in back home. Buying time. Buying time to get up to that Hive Tech. That's what you gotta be doing here. High ground attack on the Supply Depot would not be bad. Siege mode is almost done. Let's see if that finishes at this point. High ground. Ugh. See, look. Damage of Hydra's 10. Damage of Goliath's 12 plus 1. Now the plus 1 is done. Said the Dr. Seuss. Now the Siege mode is done. And now the Hydra's can't really push in there. They can try to get some decent trades here, but not going particularly well. Goliath ground damage, I must say, is underrated. I just think a lot of people disrespect it. Sure, they love the anti-air, but that twin cannon attack is pretty devastating. It hits hard, and they're slow to make up for it, right? The faster you are, the smaller your attacks are. The slower you are, the bigger your attacks are. <gasps> and we're doing the queen thing. Oh, what? Mm. Uh. Okay, okay. This Man, I'm having some serious deja vu. So this is basically a game that we saw where Queen, Queen went against, who was the Terran? I can't remember who the Terran was, but Queen went against a Terran. On this map, the Terran went for this opening with the Goliaths and the Siege Tanks, and Queen went for Queens. And spoiler alert, it did not go particularly well. The Queens were just getting crushed by super long range hits from the Goliaths over and over. And sure, they were one-shotting a Goliath here, a Siege Tank there, with their spawn brooding ability. But it was not cost-efficient at all, and in the end, Queen lost the game. Uh, sniping that SCV is a nice pickup, though, for Soma. So, yeah, there's your spawn brooding upgrade. I don't know. I haven't seen this work particularly well in the past, but I do believe in Soma. Finishing second place in ASL is no joke. That's super mega impressive. So I'm gonna believe in Soma here. He, he can make it work, even if maybe Queen couldn't do it. 
Which is saying a lot, because Queen's an amazing Zerg player. But maybe Soma represents the up-and-coming up and coming youth and strength of the future. Oh, this is an RJB replay, so if you're watching this, be sure to go to RJB TV on YouTube and thank RJB for sending me this replay as part of a huge pack sometime last year that I'm still working through. But yeah, leave him a comment on one of his videos. Tell him that Falcon sent ya. He'll appreciate it, I'll appreciate it, everybody will be happy. So, Vulture Drop, I am like this very much. The queens are trying to hide. Like, no, nope, there's no, no queens here at all. You can't see this, right? Yeah, I can totally see this. Okay. Yep, dropship sniped, but did scout the queens. So, more goliaths it is. More factories it is. Getting plus one flyer. Are we working on... Hmm... Are we working on more Mutalisks is my question. So Hive coming in, it definitely 100% cannot be Guardians. Goliaths are just too good against Guardians. They've got incredible amounts of range. They hit them really hard. It's a reason you don't usually see Guardians used against Terran, unless it's like in a harassing, harassing style. EMP Shockwave coming in. This is a lot of Queens. This is... An insane amount of queens. Oh, it's a ton of hydras. Like, so many hydralisks. Siege tank count, a little bit scary here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess we're trying to come up this ramp then. Alright. Alright, the queens are here. They're trying to throw down the spawn broodlings, and they're all. They're all dying. That's the problem here. Sure. Did you one-shot a bunch of these tanks? Absolutely. Did you kill enough of them that this attack is working? Not so much. Scourge getting killed here. Maybe it's working. At the very least, the hiders can get up here and stop mining on this third base, which is sure that's a victory. But Siege Tank Fire is just one-shotting one these hydras. I mean, not one-shotting them because... Not quite enough for that. And then the Mutas come in. Are there enough Goliaths to handle Los Mutalisks? The answer seems to be yes. Fourth base is coming in here from Soma. Hydra is just standing. Oh, try. Ow. Ow. Yeah, they don't want. It's very close. It's two shotting them. I mean, very close to one shotting is two shotting. Even though it's, you know, t t twice the damage. The Filer Mound coming in. More Queens on the way. The trades are not good. They're just not good. Soma. I, I'm not a fan of the strat, man. I'm not sure it's paying for itself. We know how important paying for yourself is when it comes to strategies in StarCraft and you're trying to win. Couple drones go down. Still at 45 workers, making four at a time. Spider mines out, and ha pretty happily three basing here is ample. And Terran on three bases is pretty pleased. And sending out vultures to harass. If you're a Terran player and you're trying to use vultures as you're trying to mech here against a Zerg or a Protoss, sending vultures out to attack and check for bases coming up is a really important thing to do. You can't just sit home and macro. You will get overwhelmed, but if you send vulture attacks out, kind of go from base to base to base to base, base, see what you can till, kill, throw down spider mines, maybe once in a while run into a hydra group that's very angry to see you and then flee, but doing this with your APM will keep the other player on their back foot, slow them down, allow you to kill more stuff, etc. Let's see if we get a fourth base here from Ample, or if he's going to just be content to be on three for the time being. It sure seems like it, doesn't it? Consumes on the way from Ample, or from Soma. Terran music washing over us with nostalgia as we watch this game on Coliseum. When times were simpler, and we were younger, and we loved the StarCraft as much as we do now. Yeah, hit the like button if you enjoyed this game. I think it's been really good so far. And 
samples at 161 supply to 129 for Soma. And a lot of Soma supply is in Queens. Not in Queens the place, but in Queens, you know. The actual Brood War unit. It's a Starcraft 2 unit that's the Queen as well, but it can't fly, and it's way better than the Queen in Brood War. <laughs> If you don't watch my StarCraft 2 casts, I recommend it. It's still Falcon Paladin. It's still a lot of fun and good casting, I would hope. But I understand that a lot of you people are Brood War only, or a lot of people are also StarCraft 2 only. So, all StarCraft is good StarCraft as far as I'm concerned. Tastosis would agree. But you know, to each their own. Gotta respect the preferences. That's what I always say. This is looking pretty problematic for so much. Look how much mech there is here. Look at it. Look at it. So the Hydras are fleeing for their lives. Hydras are not a good answer against mech at this stage of the game. They're just not. They're still kind of making them. Oh, we're making lurkers, are we? So we're trying to go lurker dark swarm against this mech, which... Okay, I guess that's one thing you can do. Is that a base? He is floating a CC across. Try to land here for our fourth base, which the Overlord is going to see. But in a direct engagement, I mean, it's just... 195 to 165 supply. The mech is more cost efficient than the Zerg stuff, too. So I kind of feel like this is a situation where Soma needs to be on a ton of bases, which he is. He's taking this bottom right. He's getting that extractor up there, too, for his fifth extractor. Which means he's going to have a ton of available gas here very soon. Problem is, does he have time for that? Ah, EMP toss down on the Queens. Hot move. Dark Swarm Lurker is up. The Vultures don't like that. The Tanks are generally okay with it. That said, you don't really just want to sit there while their Lurker Spines pushing it up and into your cockpit. Ooh, Ample expanding again. So this is a naked ninja expand, which this Overlord totally sees, so never mind. All right, Soma, getting adrenal glands, working on more lurkers, working on more hydras. These mutas coming in to try to see what they can do, but guess what? That's why we have goliaths. That's it. That's why we have the... Okay, mutas are dying. Some good spawn broodlings there. But a queen goes down. Another one gets irradiated. That one needs to toss. That has energy for a spawn broodling, though. Oh, Soma. So neglect neglected. The queens are neglected. This push is so scary. Soma supply blocked. Oh, he got out. Now he's supply blocked again. Science vessels providing the high ground support for these siege tanks. Ample taking the top left. This is looking extremely disastrous for Soma. You remember when it was earlier in this game and I said mech victories always look more dominating than bio victories do? This is this is really looking like one of those. It is really, really looking like one of those right now. It's 180 to 136 supply. These bottom bases are on lockdown. These queens just don't have enough energy. They've already done a spawn broodling. They don't have enough energy for a second one for some time. And they just got EMP'd, so never mind. That dream's over, except for this queen right here. Uh, Defiler has no energy for anything at all. Did he throw down? Nope, didn't throw down a plague either. Yeah, this ginormous tank group is the larger problem here. Yeah, did you kill a few Goliaths? Excellent. Vulture's not getting much done. Cool. Uh, oh, did he Hydra drop? He Hydra drop dropped up here and killed this base. And he killed this one. All right, Soma. Maybe. I'm going to give you a maybe, maybe rating right now. Ow. Ow. Man, that low ground. These tanks can hit here. Dude, the range from... Bonkers. It's bananas. Alright, so Soma loses a base. Bottom right base still lives. Initial three bases still live. 
Denying additional bases of Ample is an important thing. Is he doing enough of that? I don't know. Ample's on four bases. He's at 199 to 160 supply. He's still trying to kill this bottom right. And you know what? I think he can do it. Oh, Hyder's just getting destroyed here. And more queens dying without ever accomplishing anything. And Soma taps out. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Um, let, uh, let me, my goodness. I just, I need to reiterate, I don't like this strategy. This is why queens, we don't see them very much against Terran, especially when they're making, which I don't know why, why you would do that, but why you do that against Bio necessarily, but yeah, they just, how many units got spawned broodling today? Like 15, generously? How many queens died? Probably 10. Do they pay for themselves? No. They're super gas heavy. They're just dead weight most of the time. You can't cast Bomb Broodling twice on a single full energy queen. So I th think most queens maybe got one Spawn Broodling off and that was it. Some of them got zero off and that was it. And yeah, just three, three siege tanks, man. Queens are just not the answer. They're not. It's all about surrounds, right? It's about surrounds. It's about drops. If you can drop on top of the Terran army, you're going to do better than if you try to engage it over ground or even over air. Because Guardians aren't an answer. Mutalisks are not the answer here. Especially if it radiates around and these mutas keep stacking on top of each other. It's very difficult to handle mech. It is totally doable. And we do see it happen sometimes. Sometimes from players who just out macro the Terran and just have so many lings and ultras and so much Dark Swarm, it doesn't matter. But if the Terran is macroing as well as the Zerg player is, and you're kind of even to even on army value and stuff like that, the Zerg gets crushed on the ground every time. Once the 3-3 tanks and 3-3 Goliaths start hitting, and once Irradiates are available, and Defensive Matrix and stuff, it's just nope. Not happening. Queens are just gimmicky. It feels like if you win with them, it's kind of a gimmick, and if you lose with them, well, you kind of expect it to do so. Anyway, 20 minutes elapsed there, 129,000 points for Ample, 139,000 points, or rather for Soma, Ample with the higher score, obviously. 394 to 262 produced, 233 to 110, uh, 113 killed, so 2 to 1 kill death ratio, not bad. Uh, not a lot of Zerglings there actually made by Soma today, so that kind of explains that number as well. And then resources, Soma did have more gas mined and more minerals mined and outspent the Terran by only a about 2,500, which is just not enough in a 20-minute game to beat a mecking Terran who starts out mecking, has those Goliaths to deal with the Muter Harass very well. The Muter Harass did almost nothing. I think it killed a single SCV that was building that third command center. So that completely shut that down. The Hydra attack, tried to get stuff done, but then he had enough tanks at that point. I mean, that was just flawlessly, flawlessly played by Ample. He read Soma like... I mean... Whew, I mean, like a... Just like a book, you know? Incredible. I mean, just absolutely incredible. So, great game. Really, really fantastic game there. And that's going to be it for me today. So, this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Starcraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.